Welcome back to Prague. Today we're doing pretty much all of the touristy things. The only things we've done so far is Prague Castle and St. Vitus Cathedral. And that had us so tuckered because it was, again, like I'd missed a heat wave. Like it was so hot to do that walk and it wasn't very stroller friendly. So Abdella literally had to like carry the stroller and Oliver up and down the stairs, which is difficult. It's not like an easy task. So yesterday was a complete write off. We didn't do anything because we were exhausted from the day before. We also went to the communist museum which I learned so much while we were there. And today is our last day in Prague and we have to do all of the things. Not that we wasted our first two other days, but we, we enjoyed them. We took them to relax and it was much needed. But today we need to get all of the things done. Right, Oliver? Right, we're gonna have a good day. Let's go. It's nice to come to the places that we already know we like because it's always a gamble when traveling and we did not want to risk it today. So we're in Wenklesen something square. Less of a square, more just of put, a boulevard. Just put the name, just put yeah. the name somewhere. <laughs> Thank you for moving your hand around the screen. Less of a square, more of a boulevard, but it's like the main strip of Prague. Um, so we're just kind of vibing out the city. They seem to be setting up for some sort of market or something. Lots of cars driving through, dropping things off. But it's like a, it seems like a big shopping center. We just passed a Rolex. There was a McDonald's. It's very like regular city vibes. Building. We made it to the dancing house. On top of that, there's a bar, but we don't really want to go get drinks right now. I don't understand how this building like stands. Abdullah would know better than I do, but it looks like it should be falling down. The dancing house is right by the water, so it's just really pretty views, and you get to walk along the water afterwards. It's really nice. Does Ollie want to go to a playground? I. We made it to the head of Franz Kafka. It's like a memorial thing. It almost looks like a big rotating disco ball, but in the shape of his head. We stopped at the Starbucks that's like right next to it, and I put Oliver to sleep. Now he's passed out in his stroller. And we're just drinking our big tea. When you get something for here in Europe, it like actually is in a for here cup. It's not like that in North America. Everything comes in like plastic. A, it's not just without a lid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. But it's a nice spot to come and sit. We do have two things. Franz Kafka was a realist writer from Prague, and there's multiple things to honor him throughout the city, including museums, you can go to his old house, multiple statues for him. That's the only one that I think we're gonna be seeing. The other ones are in the Jewish Quarter. A five minute walk from the rotating head is the man hanging out, which is Freud, because he's also from this city. Um, yeah, I don't is know. Is he from just, the city? Yeah, he was born here, but he moved to Vienna, and that's where his practice was. But the little alleyway with the Freud hanging out is really cute, really giving Diagon Alley vibes, like we're in Harry Potter. Um, there's a lot of cute restaurants and stores down this strip. Whoop, super windy. We're on the Charles Bridge. Definitely would be worth coming here earlier, like sunrise or sunset. Actually, no, sunset's probably so, still super busy. Sunrise to like avoid how touristy it is, because it is really packed. Like I thought it would be touristy, because pretty much everywhere online says it's super touristy, but it's literally like there's people everywhere on the bridge. Still doesn't stop you from getting a nice view, but packed. Try, try to 
So we made it to the Spanish synagogue, which is the site of where the first synagogue in the city was. And right next to it is another statue of Franz Kafka, where it's supposed to be symbolic of him like sitting on the shoulders of bureaucracy, is what I understood it from the video that we watched. We're following like a self-guided walking tour. Um, which means we're getting kind of confused and a little bit lost, but there's lots Here. of signs around the city to figure out where you're going. So the Jewish quarter is super popular because when Hitler uh, invaded the Czech Republic, he left and like collected a lot of Jewish artifacts um, so he could eventually make a museum of the extinct race. But because he preserved all those artifacts, they were able to be collected and brought back to the area and he didn't tear down any of the synagogues in Prague. He did outside of Prague, but specifically in this area, there's just so much history. There are so many places here that sell chimney cakes. Of course, there's a Hooters in downtown Prague. Okay, we're back at the Airbnb. Uh, we finished everything on our Prague to-do list, um, but here's a little story time where I guess I'll be pretty brief and get to the point. But do you know the stat and it's like you need seven compliments to make up for like every insult that you receive? Well, we just had like such a bad experience on our way home that that bad experience doesn't outweigh the good experiences of Prague. Like it just instantly left like a, a bad taste in our mouth, not for the city as a whole, but enough that I was like, wow, this person is so rude that I don't wanna be here. So I'm looking forward to leaving this city. Like, I hate how like awful that sounds, but I'm definitely just like, one bad experience could really, you don't want it to ruin a trip, and it didn't ruin the trip. Like, we still really enjoyed ourselves and we saw a lot of cool things today. But for what we saw and what we experienced, like, the bad outweighs the good um, with the city in, in specific, because like, minor bad things, they like just, they don't really get under your skin, but sometimes it's just like, oh my God, like I cannot believe, I cannot believe it. We had one of those experiences where it was just like, makes your blood boil. But we're back, we're relaxing now. It's about two o'clock and honestly, it was just getting pretty warm. So it's gonna be nice to relax and we're gonna take Oliver to the park later, get something to eat. Probably just another one of the restaurants that are around this area. There's so many restaurants around our Airbnb and like all of the ones that we've been to have been fantastic. We did try and stop at a restaurant in the Old Town area, but they were all, you needed to have like reservations. So make reservations if there's specific restaurants that you wanna to go to, because there was places that didn't look as good and then they were really expensive and then you didn't need a reservation, but the places that were like, they look good and their prices were reasonable, you needed a reservation. So try and make a reservation uh, before coming to the city if you do decide to come to the city. <sighs> yeah, I'm out of breath from walking up all the stairs. Also, another thing, if you're booking an Airbnb here, most of them you need to walk up a million stairs and it's exhausting. Are you in there? Ah! Bye. I realize I ended this video on a weird note. I hope I didn't come across as ungrateful. However, we were coming near the end of this trip and our patience levels were running really low, purely based on exhaustion, traveling just in general, like it takes a lot out of you. And by this point, like we were just excited to be leaving Central Europe. I knew we would be home soon. We were really looking forward to just getting back to like a slower pace of like our regular daily lives. Prague is seriously such a beautiful city. It was 100% worth the visit and I don't want one bad experience to make it seem like we absolutely hated the city because that's that's not the case and I think it came off that way a little bit so I just want to say that that's not the case. This trip was a huge bucket list item for me and having it come to an end was very emotional 
I felt really close to death, if I were to put it into words. I don't know why I felt that way, but I was just like, if this is almost done, like, <laughs> what else am I gonna do? I was looking forward to it for just so long, and I don't know, it was very, very hard for me to, like, I don't know, let let it go, let the planning aspect of it go, knowing that it was over. Um, it's hard, hard to describe, hard to put that into words, but thank you so much for coming along on this journey with us. It was unforgettable and one of the best trips of my life so far. Bye, guys.